Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play No Man's Sky Permadeath Edition Next Update. I'm your host, Colors Fade. It's episode 74. And I have decided it's time to make some more money. We're at 81 million right now. <clears throat> I'm looking for an explorer. Or a really awesome A-class or S-class max slot hauler. So we're going to pick out the most expensive things here. Our exosuit continues to get upgraded. So we've ended up with a lot of room on it. And in fact, something else I'm going to do here that I'm thinking about it is my exosuit has a whole lot of navigation data, and quite honestly, I don't need all this navigation data. This is overkill. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to go back in here and buy the remainder of this. Omic Joe. And then we're going to take off for the next planet. And I'm going to keep looking for Corvax systems as a priority because they have what I believe is the best collection of explorers. Um, each one of the major races has a different set of ships in its system. Viking races have seven fighters in their systems. I believe the Gek have the most haulers in their system. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that the Corvax have the most explorers in their system. So here we are, red. I need an orange one. And I would, pref it's got to be a, 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 like this, booming. Now that's a Gek, so we're going to tag it. And we're going to keep looking because I want to see if I can find another one that is also high supply like that so it's going to be booming or or affluent or opulent or something like that but we're going to hope we can find one and hope that it's uh, Corvax so there's an advanced one and it's Corvax this is great two big planets with a bunch of moons so let's see what kind of ships we have there because if I can find an explorer model that I really want, I will actually stop and farm the best version of it that I can. I'd really love to get an S-Class one because their hyperdrives are fantastic. Amazingly, we still have some room left to upgrade. We're not maxed out yet, but we're really close. Oh, this is one of those haulers that has the wings on it. I love these. I don't like this color scheme as much as the other one, but that's a B-35. That's really nice. I love those those wings like that on those haulers. That's awesome. Scan five minerals. But that hauler design is probably as far as looks go. That's my favorite hauler design. The question is, I don't think you can get a max slot hauler using that particular ship design. So what do we have here? Caustic planet. Now, it should have, what, some moons? Let's go check this out. It's got a moon on the other side. There it is. 
is. What kind of moon is that? It's a fractured moon, so it's not not important. Okay, I thought it might be an interesting little moon, but it's not. Let's go down here on this caustic planet. See if we can find a trade station. Trading post, close by, nice. Nice to get lucky every now and then. Oh my, this has some really big creatures. Wow, it's got giant viper type, cobra type dinosaurs. Those things are awesome. What the hell? There's 12 planets on this. I mean, 12 creature types on this planet. Look at those things. This is an. These are interesting little explorers. So that's a C21, and that is a C15. None of those are, no, those, those critters are really wild looking. Little Corvex. Sell, sell, sell. Let's see, what am I buying? What do they have to buy here? Well, I need to always be looking at stuff. In case they have something I really want. I like this though, when you start to get enough storage space and you can just say whatever your tier one good is, I'm buying all of it. Whatever your tier two good is, pretty much buying all that. And then on the ship, whatever your tier three good is, we're gonna buy a bunch of those. If only I had a fat hauler to really help us out. Alright, what do we have here? Okay. Those things are crazy looking. That is wicked cool. Big, huge cobra dinosaur. Oh, I'm laughing. That's just awesome. I wanted to check on something, so I'm going to do that here in a second. Um, first, let's see if these guys have any ships that want to work for me. It doesn't seem like they do. These guys just flew in. They might have someone. Still need a few more frigates. I just wanted to check something on my ship. I wanted to inspect my S-Class exotic. Which is... Right there, this thing. I just wanted to see it for a second. It has what? When it comes to hyperdrive range, it is plus 50%. But you can see how small of a region the hyperdrive is. You'd have to put all the hyperdrive stuff in that slot there. So it wouldn't give you the maximum bonus, which for going through black holes is... So it's a neat ship to have. I'm 
exotics are, are so, such a weird thing for me because they're so neat and then they have no storage space and it's like what's the point and nobody nobody's really gonna use those I'm really hoping that in an update in the future and it probably won't be beyond it probably won't be in the beyond update but I'm really hoping that in the future they change kind of the way ships work okay so I need a yellow one Yellow one, medium supply, sustainable, balanced, failing. That's not what we want here, gentlemen. Satisfactory is not what we want either. Not good enough, promising, not good enough, adequate, not good enough. It's been really weird doing all of this trading with a ship that doesn't have the maximum amount of rage. I'm used to being able to go like 900 light years away to find really ideal systems to trade in. But And that's why you really want like a hauler, a max slot hauler, because it can just go so much further. I'm really having a problem with these yellow star systems finding. There's a wealthy one and it's Viking, so I'm going to hold on to that. Still looking, failing, promising out of jump range. All right. I'll take that one if I have to get it, but that's my only choice. I'm still looking at the Corvax ones because. All right. Show me then, what do you got? These are Corvax out of jump range. All right. Where's my custom waypoint say? It says go way up here and this is the system. All right. Yellow, my friend, get on it. Viking, well, let's do that one then. I wanna spend all day looking for a system. But that is why in my trading tutorial, I completely recommend finding a max slot hauler, decking it out fully with S-Class hyperdrive upgrades, and then you can go 900 and some light years at a time. Now, if, if our exosuit is completely fully upgraded then I really no longer need to go back into the stations anymore and that's when trading gets really fast that's why I'm trying to save up about 120 million for a max slot freighter is because then you can just with a fully upgraded exosuit you just hop from system to system okay, I, don't, I don't know then you can just skip going to the space station. There's none around. Alright, what do we have here? Undiscovered planet. Frosty, the snowman. Hyperborean planet. You're not just boring, you're hyperborean. Right. Trading post too far away. Exit. It would be fun if we could actually find a really awesome 
A or S class explorer from a crashed ship. I would totally dig that. I would spend the time to and the resources to fix it up if that happened. Which means I need to get out my signal processor and try to find it. See, there's explorers over there and they got those tall wings and I'm not a fan of those. I'm just really picky, okay? Hostile Sentinels on a frozen planet. Hmm, that doesn't happen very often. Sell items. Right, before we buy anything. We're at 92 million. I think at 120 million what I'll do is go back to one of the planets that I have previously earmarked as a good one to find a max slot hauler on. And we'll go farm them. Well, there's a minor settlement over there. And an abandoned building, which you don't care about. Okay. On to the next one, gentlemen. Oh! Don't fly off the... Spin around a little too fast there. The most expensive item is the high capacity vector compressor. And the next most expensive is this holographic crankshaft. See, that's. that cracks me up. Real crankshafts are frequently too large, noisy, or hard to maintain for use in delicate machines. When faced with this situation, high tech manufacturers turn to these holographic substitutes. How funny is that? Oh my gosh, we're going to be able to get all these two? Almost. The next most expensive is the six-pronged mesh decoupler. The creation of high-tech components often involves accidental mesh coupling. These decouplers are particularly powerful, being able to deploy six prongs simultaneously. That All of that is so funny. It's like, we're just going to make things that, that are completely nonsensical, and it's going to work, because it's just for fun. Let's see, yeah, so there's all the different, I don't see anything there as far as explorers go that I want, or I don't see any always that I want either. I didn't realize I could pulse engine almost immediately. Okay, so let's do that. Galactic core. All right, we're at yellow. We need to find a cyan one. Sustainable. Sometimes finding one of these that just... I mean, the Corvax component of this, of this is secondary. But the most important thing is finding the right kind of system to trade in first. So there's a wealthy one, and it's Gek. So before we even go there, let's see if we can find a Corvax one. That is also high supply booming affluence, something like that. Out of jump range. Out of jump range. Out of jump range. Out of jump range. Right here at the limit over here, aren't we? Right there is out of jump range. By keen, adequate, only. Sustainable, balanced. That's a Corvax one, but it was only balanced. Out of jump range. I really need that hauler. Isn't isn't that the case? All right, so let's go here. Gek. The hardest part about getting 120 million and then finding a really awesome A-class hauler is parting with your money. <laughs> it's, you spend all this time building it up and then you farm it and you find that the A-class or S-class 48 slot plus 12 hauler and you're like, yes, that's the one and then you have to let all that money go. And then you gotta start from zero. But it's cool. I'm either gonna find a, uh, a hauler or an explorer. 
If I find the Explorer first, then I'm just gonna gear up. I'm just gonna gear it up, and I'm gonna head for the Galactic Center. And if I find the Hauler first, that's gonna deplete my, my financial resources, and so I'll just continue trading and looking for another million. Okay, so we still got a bunch more of these. It's, it's still worthwhile to land in these space stations, but I'm gonna skip grabbing the extra quests because I have enough of them now. There is a big fat hauler right there that was blue. That thing was gorgeous. That is a dead planet, and that one is not, so let's go there. Unknown moon, the moon of Atur 11. It's a flourishing moon. It's flourishing, I say. It looks pretty. It's red from space, which means that by the time we land, it'll be like green or blue or something. Some kind of tower down here. So I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to land at this tower. It ended up being red after all. How nice. Hey. Nice. It's a red planet with no hostile sentinels. Awesome. Oh, I love planets like this. These make me giddy. Okay. Show me a downed ship that's actually a really nice A-class explorer. 80 minus 9 is 71. Minus 8 gets you to 63. Minus 7 gets you to 56. Minus 6 gets you to 50. That's the sequence. And there's a distress code, and so we'll go check that out after we trade. Or whichever one is closer. It has me look at the floor after that, I don't know, but... How nice. I suppose I should grab the nanites here, shouldn't I? There's none in there. It's been interesting because I just watched... I think his name is Murray. Update for Beyond, his video. And I say to you, pardon me, I had to, once again, sneeze. So, anyway, I watched his video where he talked about the three pillars of the update. How far away is this ship? It's a little further away, so we're going to do the trading first. And it was pretty interesting to hear him talk about certain aspects of the game. For instance, the fact that you'll now find NPCs walking around on the planet in various places, experiencing them at more locations than just the space stations and the trading outposts and things like that. And that alone uh, seemed like a pretty awesome change. Wow, look at that. Okay, I'm not... Okay, hold on. Look at all this flat ground. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do something that I normally wouldn't do. But this is a great spot for a base. Oh, man. Look at all this flat ground on a planet that doesn't have hostile sentinels. Um, I need two ion batteries, which means I need cobalt. Or can I build a base computer? Chromatic metal. I can. I don't really want to do that right now. Though. <sighs> okay. Hmm. How can I get some cobalt? This is incredible. This is like unheard of. This big, huge, flat space. Oh my gosh. I'm killing myself. Okay. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Oh, there's got to be a cave down here, doesn't there? I mean, there's no cave down there. 
that's the bedrock that's the base of it so there's nothing there I'm gonna keep looking around can I get that explorers what kind of explorer C15 not impressed Look at all this stuff. This is this is a crazy good location. And this is the kind of place you just want to build a planet. I mean, build a base and settle down. This is pretty awesome. Okay, hold on. I know how to find stuff. I'm not this dumb. Where is another building? Okay. I'm looking for anything that might be received as underground. Let's go check out this building. What is this thing? I need some cobalt, man. I need cobalt. You just don't find huge flat spots is the thing. So that's why I'm thinking. Look at this. Wow. Is that a cave back there? Oh, there's a cave here. Hot diggity dog. Oh my gosh, there's cobalt all over the place down here. Okay, um... What's going to be the best thing to do here? Metal plane. I can get rid of the Mordite. I don't need that. Let's see. Dihydrogen. Okay, hold on. Oxygen. How much do I have? I have a whole bunch. So let's do this. Alright, this gives me some room to work with here. Oh, there's the first critter I've seen. How many critters are there? One of four? Wow. Well, that's crazy. There's only four creatures on this planet? Hmm. So this is how the game distracts me. I've talked about this before. It's I love it. I love the fact that this is, I'm just out here trading. I'm minding my own business. I'm thinking I'm just going to make some credits. And then a big, huge, giant flat spot shows up. And it's like, oh my gosh, I could build it. I could build a really wide, sprawling base on it. I'm totally digging it. Nothing. Interesting. I thought that might be. Okay, I wanted to make a battery. I need more? What else do I need? I need 15 more ferret dust. Okay. Let's go find some ferrite dust. Oh, really? Well, hold on to your hats there. Yes. Okay, let's get out of this place. Where is my ship? There's an unknown building. Let's go investigate that on our way over to our ship. 
Let's. It's got some nice palm tree looking trees. This is just. And look at that cave system. That is out of sight. Incredible. I'm loving this. This is fantastic. What is it? Oh, it's a drop pod. Oh, that's funny. I'm not going to concern myself with that. But I do want um, this stuff. Oh, don't get worked up. It's just some dihydrogen. Right, what do I want to call this planet so that I can remember it? You guys. What are you? There's only three creatures on this planet? Oh, three of nine. Okay, I counted wrong there. Fantastic. There we go, there's a beacon. That is brilliant. Big, huge flat spot. Might be building a base there later. Probably not, because Beyond is going to come out in a few more days, but... What the heck? Just in case. Come back to this planet later. Who knows? I satisfied my own curiosity about that. Getting a beacon down, so... Those guys are up there doing synchronized swimming in the air. It's a great planet, though. All right, quantum accelerator. Taking all of you. getting close to the 100 million mark. That's pretty dang awesome. Alright, exosuit is stacked. Oh, look. C40 and it's blue. It's a C40 and it's kind of an off color blue. It's kind of like more green. It's like a sea green. Interesting. All right. oh. Let's go check out that crash. nice things about Beyond or what's going to happen to my channel after Beyond 
if I have to start a new game, I have to start a new game, that's fine. But what's going to be nice is I am getting an upgrade in my internet next week with a upload speed that's going to be four times what it is now. So longer episodes will be probably a little more practical. So if I do have to restart with Beyond, and even if I don't, you might be able to expect to see some longer episodes for No Man's Sky, more like in the one hour range, which will be great. Pretty excited about Beyond, even though I don't think most of the changes are going to affect me, and even though I do believe, probably, in all likelihood, I'm going to have to start a new save. What is this building on the way? Let's find out. Oh, what do we have here? Well, I already found a crash, so if it's a transmission tower, it probably doesn't matter. And there's another trading post right there. This is a busy little planet, too. There seem to be... Well, and it's a moon, so that's another thing that helps it out. So I'm just going to name it now. This planet I'm going to name This is in the Vacazom system. And I left it as Vacazom and didn't rename it because I'd already visited the space station. And so in doing so, what that means is if I rename the system right now, the space station wouldn't get that new name. And that can make it hard to find when you're trying to use a teleporter to get back here. Now that might be a bug that they're eventually going to fix, but oh, it's a big huge uh, trade station there too. And there's a holographic terminal there. Interesting. This Hello, Distress Beacon. We're coming for you. This looks like a fun planet to just explore. And that flat hilltop was perfect for base building. Like, really perfect. down there. And another one down there. Yeah, just a little, little living quarter situations. So here we go. Crashed ship. Do we have a crashed ship? Do we just have an empty space? It looks like we just have an empty space. Alright, we'll clear it and we'll move on. No ship. Alright. Sometimes it likes to give me things. Some piece of tech or something. So just broadcast the signal. Alright. Well folks, I'm going to call an end to this episode here since it's 40 minutes long. We're going to continue to trade in the next system. Thanks for watching. As always, if you guys have a question or comment, drop it down below. If you like the channel, please subscribe. If you think your friends like it, have them subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.